When it comes to building 2D platformer games, Flowlab can be a fantastic toolkit. In fact, most resources and tools for Flowlab help guide new developers in creating one. But did you know that Flowlab can be used to create much more than just 2D platformers? In fact, just about any 2D game is possible. Whether you want a top-down adventure or a cozy mobile game, it's got you covered. In this video, we'll cover how you can make a space shooter, a top-down adventure game, and a simple point-and-click with ease. Before any game developing can happen, we're going to change one little setting that'll help make all this possible. By default, Flowlab sets the gravity of the game to 45. This is great if you want a side view game, such as a platformer, but to change your game from a side view to a top view, we're going to set the gravity to zero. With this all set, all movable objects we create won't have to worry about dropping like a stone. And now we can get to our first game. There's nothing like a dangerous flight through space. It's a common theme in games, especially arcade games, and it's super simple to create in Flowlab. Let's make our spaceship starting with a new object. We'll use this little ship sprite, and then we'll go into the physics of the object. For this, we want to make sure our ship is solid and movable. With our gravity set to zero, our ship will have that floaty zero gravity feel. Finally, be sure your forward direction is facing the same way as your sprite. In this case, I'll be selecting up. Now we'll go into the behaviors menu. You might think this is where it gets complicated, but this is the easiest step. On the left hand side, go to the behavior bundles tab. Flowlab comes with a few readily available bundles, which are pre-made behaviors grouped into one. Select the one named ship controls. If you go into the bundle, you'll see that it's all laid out for you. The left and right keys will rotate your ship, and the up key will propel it forward. If we press play here, we can take a look at the behaviors in action. And just like that, you've got a soaring spaceship to explore whatever galactic world you create. Check out this cool world! What should we do first? Should we talk to those knights? Uh, try to open that chest? Oh, uh, maybe we should explore the cemetery! Uh, wait a minute. <laughs> There's one problem. With no player character, how are we going to explore? Not to worry. Flowlab's got you covered here too. Let's make a new object and give him a fancy sprite. Then we'll go into the physics and make sure he's solid and movable. Afterwards, we'll head into the behaviors menu. To start, we'll grab two keyboard triggers that are set to the left and right keys. We also need to make sure they're both repeating. We'll grab two number behaviors from the logic and math tab. Let's set the first one to three and the second one to negative three. Now we'll connect the down output of the right key to three and the left key to negative three. Next up, we'll grab a velocity behavior from the properties tab. We'll connect the output of the two number behaviors to the X input of the velocity behavior. This will move the player back and forth, but it won't stop them once they start. So to make sure the player can stop, we'll grab a number behavior set to zero. Connect the up output of the keys to the get input of the zero, and connect that output to the X input of the velocity behavior. Now as you move around, when you release a key, the player will stop moving in that direction. Now that we can move left and right, let's get you to move up and down. We'll need a similar set of behaviors two keyboard triggers set to the up and down keys, and two number behaviors set to three and negative three. Connect the down output of the down key to the three and the up key to the negative three. Then connect their outputs to the Y input of the velocity behavior. Now, to make sure the player stops when you release these keys, connect their up outputs to the same zero as the other keys, and connect that output to the Y input of the velocity behavior. And just like that, we can start our grand adventure. We've seen how we can make different characters move in different games, but what about a game that doesn't have a character to control? Maybe you are the player in a point and click story. As always, Flowlap has you covered. Here, we have the start of a pet simulator. This poor kitty is a little down, 
but let's make it so the player can cheer them up by petting them. For this object, we don't need to adjust any physics. All we need is the sprite and an animation for when they're happy. You can do this by going to the animation menu at the bottom of the sprite editor. Just select Create New, give it a name, and add your sprite. With the pieces all set, we'll head into the editor. All we'll need is a mouse click trigger and an animation behavior from the Properties tab. Connect the down output to the start input of the animation behavior. Then, go into that animation behavior and select Loop Animation. Now, when you click on the kitty, it becomes happy. And you can go a step further by making your own effects for when you click on the kitty. Aww. It's easy to assume that Flowlab is for platformers, and every other genre is more of an afterthought. However, this couldn't be farther from the truth. When it comes to 2D games, if you can dream it, you can probably use Flowlab to build it. Whether it's soaring through space without a care in the world, going out on a quest to save the kingdom, or just spending time tapping away, Flowlab can be used to build whatever your game development heart desires.